So you have come from all parts of uh, India. Uh, how many are, are you, uh, how many of you are from North India? Okay, that means the rest of them, rest of you are from South India, right? How many are you from Western India? That's good. How many are you are you from the Eastern part of India? Excellent. How how many of you are from South? Okay. Now it turns out that many of you are raising your hands for many things. So <laughs> looks like uh, you have not understood the distinction between the four directions, right? Okay. All the same, uh, a very warm welcome to, <coughs> first of all, Bangalore. Uh, Bangalore is a city that uh, some of you may be coming for the first time. Who is coming to Bangalore for the first time? That's good. So quite a few are coming to Bangalore for the first time. So I would like to wish all of you a very warm welcome to Bangalore. Then how many of you are coming to IISC for the first time? Many, many of you. So I would like to wish all of you a very warm welcome to IISC. And how many of you are coming to CSA for the first time? OK, so a very warm welcome to all of you. Uh, as you know, Bangalore is uh, a happening city. And uh, it is truly called as the Silicon Valley of India for many, many reasons. And all of you are aware of those reasons. And uh, so in Bangalore, IISC is one of the uh, oldest institutions. It's actually 104 years old. Uh, it was started way back in 1909. And uh, <clears throat> through the last 104 years, IISC has emerged as the number one university or the number one academic institution in India. And uh, as far as uh, computer science and automation goes, uh, so this department was started uh, way back in 1969. Uh, so we will be celebrating our golden jubilee by the year 2018-2019. And uh, there are some statistics that I have put here. Uh, all that I would like to say is that this is the number one computer science department in India at the moment. And uh, uh, let me also tell you that I, CSA has played an influential role in Bangalore's emergence as India's IT capital. Uh, for example, if you go to the ground floor, there is a lab called the Computer Architecture and Systems Lab. And uh, so one part of that uh, CASL lab is where Wipro Information Technology Company started way back in the early 80s. So Wipro was a very small company at that time. So Wipro actually started, took its birth in this very department. Uh, so this will give you a list of all the faculty members uh, in the computer science and automation. And uh, you have been given a brochure of the department. And that brochure contains all the details of the, of the faculty members. And uh, the brochure also gives you the various areas in which uh, the department is engaged in. Uh, you would see that uh, computer science uh, as pursued in the department belongs to three main clusters. Uh, the first cluster is called the theoretical computer science clusters. And I have actually indicated some of the, uh, you know, subtopics under the theory cluster. The second cluster is computer systems, software, software engineering uh, group, uh, where again I have listed some of the main areas which are pursued here. And uh, finally, we have the third cluster, which we call as the intelligent systems cluster, where again, you will see that there are so many other interesting areas listed here. You will, you will come to know about uh, some of these areas in the department uh, as you go along uh, in the next five days. Now, this is one slide I want to show because this talks about the students of uh, computer science and automation. Uh, so you would see that we have, at this point of time, as many as 200 and 90 students of which uh, you know exactly 100 of them happen to be PhD students and uh, at this point of time this is the highest number highest concentration of PhD students for any computer science department in India at this point and uh, we also have apart from the PhD program we have three different types of masters programs 
Now the first program is called MSc Engineering. Now this is a two to two and a half year master's program where you will actually do some research and you will actually produce a thesis uh, in about two and a half years time. And uh, so BE, BTEC graduates uh, are eligible for this. They, uh, they have to have a reasonably good score in GATE and they will be interviewed and they will be uh, admitted to the MSc engineering program. Currently we have 44 students. Then we have the ME computer science uh, and engineering program where we have about 60 students uh, in the first year and uh, 60 students in the second year. And uh, this is the program uh, which is the uh, flagship program of the uh, department. So we get 60 of the uh, brightest students for this program. Uh, for example, the top 30, the top 30 students who have joined this program last year happen to be among the top 40, 40 among the All India GATE ranking. So some of the best uh, performance in, in GATE will join the ME Computer Science and Engineering program. Then we have the ME System Science and Automation program, which is a beautiful blend of computer science and system science. And we offer it in collaboration with the Electrical Engineering Department. And uh, as I told you, in addition to classical computer science courses, it will also have courses like uh, signal processing, uh, optimization, machine learning, artificial intelligence, neural networks, and uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it's a program that is tuned towards the intelligent systems track of uh, the department. And uh, this will tell you uh, something about uh, you know, how many graduates have resulted in the past few years. And uh, you know, we have produced about 45 PhD students in the last uh, six years. And they're all, uh, approximately half of them become faculty or postdocs. They go for postdocs in leading universities in the world. Uh, or they become faculty members in the Indian Institutes of Technology. Uh, or any other uh, good institutes in India. And approximately half of them, they go to industrial research jobs like Microsoft Research India, IBM India, then Google, Yahoo, Amazon, this kind of companies, right? And many of our master students, they actually go for PhD program. Approximately 20 to 25 percent of the master students here go either abroad or continue here for the PhD program. So we have a very lively and vibrant environment with uh, all these 290 students. So now uh, in the picture, right, uh, at the center of the picture, you have a Turing uh, laureate. So that is Professor Richard Karp. So he visited us in 2011 and he had a meeting with all our uh, PhD students here. And it turned out to be an excellent three hour meeting where they were able to rub shoulders with some of the celebrities in computer science. Now, you're all here for a five-day uh, summer camp, and uh, you have to look at what is the main purpose of uh, this summer camp. Uh, you should realize that uh, there is a lot of excitement in computer science uh, in, the, in the last uh, several years. And currently, there are so many things happening in computer science, not only in core computer science, but also at the interface of computer science and many other disciplines. Right? I will give you uh, just a couple of examples, right? Now, uh, some of you might have heard of uh, this uh, uh, challenge called the DARPA Red Balloon Challenge. Right? How many of you have uh, heard about it? Yes, so some of you are aware of this challenge. Now, uh, the reason I want to say something about this uh, Red Balloon Challenge is because it's very contemporary and it uses computer science uh, in a very intense way and it also exploits the interface of computer science with many other disciplines. Uh, this was a challenge uh, that was um, uh, initiated by DARPA. Uh, DARPA stands for Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. Uh, this is a defense uh, projects agen agency in the United States and this was sometime in 2010 and the challenge uh, goes as follows. Uh, there are 10 red balloons um, which will be launched in 10 different locations, 10 different undisclosed locations uh, in continental America. Now America as you know is a huge country and uh, it is almost three times in its area it's almost three times that of India 
and 10 red balloons will be launched in 10 undisclosed locations uh, in, a, in a vast stretch of area. And then you are supposed to locate these 10 red balloons uh, as fast as possible. And the deadline that was given, the time that was given was exactly 24 hours. Within 24 hours, you are supposed to uh, locate them. So obviously, a single person cannot do it. It has to be done by a team. And uh, so many organizations were encouraged to put together teams to locate these. So looks, uh, it turns out that more than 50 teams participated. And many of them were from universities uh, all over the world, uh, I mean, all over United States. And this contest was actually won by a team from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. So how many of you have heard about MIT? I'm sure all of you have heard about MIT. Uh, so there, there was a team from MIT which was able to locate all these 10 red balloons in a record time of 9 hours 52 minutes. Right? And they used uh, you know, technology which uses uh, computer science which uses uh, economics, which uses advances in information and communication technologies. It uses uh, social networks, and it uses crowdsourcing, and so on. The scheme was the following. There was a core team of volunteers uh, that was quickly put together at MIT. And uh, these volunteers were asked, were asked to recruit more volunteers. So these volunteers recruited uh, uh, you know, second level volunteers. And the second level volunteers uh, recruited uh, third level volunteers. And third level volunteers recruited the fourth level volunteers and so on. Now, what was the scheme? Now, you should somehow make all of these people work very hard and also very fast and then be able to locate. So one criterion that was used for recruiting all of these volunteers was that they should be geographically dispersed because these 10 locations could be anywhere in the United States. So geographical dispersion was one of the important factors there. And this uh, army of volunteers was recruited in a record amount of time. And then there must be an incentive scheme. See, unless you are given an incentive, unless you are given a reward, now you will not, be able, you, you will not give off your best. Now, so the in incentive scheme here was uh, very interesting. Now, the total prize money that was involved was $40,000. And this $40,000 was divided into uh, 10 red balloons, which gives uh, $4,000 per balloon. So they said this $4,000, uh, how, how is it to be divided among the volunteers? They said whoever locates the balloon, whoever locates a balloon, will get $2,000, right? And uh, there must be one person who has recruited, the, recruited this person, right? So the person who recruited the person who located the balloon will get not $2,000, but $1,000. And the person who recruited the person who recruited the person who located the balloon will get $500. And then you can go on. So at the fourth level, person who recruited the person who recruited the person who recruited the person who located the balloon will get how many dollars? $250. So this way, you have uh, a beautiful geometric series, 2,000 plus 1,000 plus 500 plus 250 and so on. What is the infinite sum of this? It will never exceed 4,000. If you have finite number of terms, it will never exceed uh, $4,000. So this is how the incentive scheme was designed. But the design of this incentive scheme was not trivial. It may look trivial. It was not trivial. It actually satisfies some very, very nice uh, properties and so on. And uh, so people actually used economics. And in economics, they used uh, game theory. They used game theory. Then they used, uh, in order to recruit all the volunteers, they used social networking. They used mobile uh, you know, uh, cell phone technology. And they used, uh, this is like crowdsourcing. So they, uh, crowdsourcing also was involved. So many different disciplines were involved in making this particular challenge, right? a beautiful success. And uh, they were actually able to crack this problem in 9 hours 52 minutes. Now you can see that computer science now gets to play a central role right, if you want to do this. Now I want to draw an analogy to something, something uh, uh, you know, very unfortunate that has happened in the last one week. All of you know that uh, you know, uh, Uttarakhand is simply reeling under 
uh, you know, the fury of uh, the river Ganges and uh, Kedarnath, Badrinath and so on. And these are all r very rough terrains, very difficult to reach. And uh, if you look at the magnitude of the rescue operations that are going on in these regions, it is to be seen to be believed. I do not know how many of you are watching the TV and the kind of uh, splendid work the army is doing. So now this is, uh, uh, this is an excellent uh, situation where crowdsourcing will be extremely useful. So you can actually use high-end technology and put together an army of volunteers and uh, s somewhat in 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 incentivize them so that this rescue missions become uh, extremely effective. So there is no reason why you will not be able to use technologies of this kind in uh, uh, you know you know disaster mitigation and management. And computer science comes to play. Uh, gets to play a central role in all of these things, right? So the second example I want to give is a piece of software called ELISA. Whenever you have time, so take a look at uh, this particular software called ELISA, which has been developed, uh, right, by a professor of the State University of New York. And uh, he now has a company, and this uh, actually produces uh, uh, this software tool called ELISA. Now, what does this tool do? Now, it's a tool uh, which uses, uh, you know, computer science, right, in all its uh, purity, and it uses uh, database technology, it uses uh, machine learning, it uses artificial intelligence, and uh, it uses cloud computing. It uses a variety of technologies, all of which, right, are causing the current excitement in computer science. And what does this do? Now, the ultimate objective of this tool called ELISA is to replace call centers completely. All of you know about call centers. Now, call centers involve a variety of mechanically oriented uh, tasks to be done by all its employees. And uh, if you look at uh, you know mega companies like uh, Infosys Technologies, Tata Consulting Services, Cognizant, and so on, it turns out that 75% of the activities which are done by some of these IT giants are also fairly routine kind of jobs. These are all called as services companies. And if you look at, if you look at the kind of activities which make up these services, they are fairly, um, you know, automatic. They are very routine, and you can actually write a computer program. And if you have an interface which can also recognize voice, and uh, which will also be able to, uh, you know, reply uh, using voice synthesis technology and so on. Uh, up to 95% of the activities done by call centers and service oriented companies can be completely automated. Now, if you now throw in artificial intelligence, machine learning technology and the so-called big data technology in conjunction with cloud computing and uh, you know, heavy duty computing resources and so on, you will have a system which can actually com almost completely replace uh, call centers. Now, if you want to put together such a system, you will uh, require uh, really high-end computer science to be used. So I'm trying to tell you there is a lot of excitement in computer science at the moment and also at the interface between computer science and many other uh, disciplines. And uh, let me also tell you that much of this excitement that is happening in computer science, you will get to see in the Department of Computer Science and Automation here. Many of these uh, challenging problems, many of these intellectually uh, uh, challenging problems are being pursued by the faculty members, the PhD students, and the master students at uh, CSA. And uh, in the next five days, you will get an opportunity of interacting with uh, some of the uh, best faculty members in IISC and also the young and energetic uh, PhD students and research students and master students of CSA. And uh, I would urge all of you to make good use of this uh, excellent opportunity that you have got over the next five days uh, at the Institute. So I would like to again wish you a very warm welcome to the Department of Computer Science and Automation and uh, to the Indian Institute of Science and uh, to Bangalore. And I hope that all of you will have an absolutely wonderful time over the next five days. Thank you.